F1 World is the central hub within F123, which introduces a unique gameplay structure involving the unlocking of car parts and personnel to increase your car's tech level. These resources must be managed by equipping, upgrading or dismantling elements. Balancing your cash, data and insight level is key, all of which are unlocked by completing single player or online races and spent on new parts or people. The higher the tech level, the quicker your car will be. Progress is now intrinsically tied to the podium pass system, a new sticker book called The Compendium, your online performance and a series of single player events. Your F1 World car is separate to the 2023 F1 lineup and that of the vehicle used within my team or driver career. The garage will be where you'll spend as much time as you do on the racetrack, so let's run through how it works to kick off. Think of it as your team's home, where more admin than a head teacher's office will be undertaken. There are two main elements that improve the performance of your car, the vehicle and the team. Within each section there are four car parts, or people categories, that affect your abilities. The vehicle, including wing, gearbox, power unit and brakes, and the team, which includes sponsor, team principal, R&D head and strategist. Equipping the vehicle parts with the garage directly affects your overall tech level, and therefore performance. The same is true, strangely, for team members. A higher rated team principal, for example, raises your tech level. But people also add mods, which arrive in the form of temporary speed boosts or weight reductions. These remind us of perks within first-person shooters, and once equipped, are displayed within the in-race HUD, next to your revs if active, and also within the multi-function display. The contact you provide a team member with also determines bonus cash or insight payouts. Completing objectives within race events will help you unlock team members and vehicle parts across the eight categories. However, they will not automatically be applied or even delivered, so after each event, you must revisit the garage. Hitting the triangle on PlayStation or Y on Xbox acts like signing for a parcel and adds the reward to your inventory. From there, you visit each subdivision and decide to equip the element or not. You see, each has its own tech score and if you receive a part or person with a higher score than the one currently in use, equipping it raises your overall rating. If it's lower than the one already in use, equipping it lowers your score, so don't do that. Instead, in this instance, you can dismantle it and earn back some cash, insights and sometimes a compendium sticker. What you receive from dismantling can be affected by your R&D head, which may have a perk that increases dismantling kickbacks, so aim for that if possible. The aim in some ways is to reach the tech level cap, which at present is a soft cap at 900 or a hard cap at 1000. The game is designed for that to be one heck of a grind. If you're still with us, hopefully you'll see that F1 World is a little odd and in some aspects similar to the F1 Racing Apple or Android app, where juggling parts or admin is a significant gameplay mechanic. It was recently updated to include the same processes where team members increase your car's overall score. Before we delve further into the upgrades, let's briefly touch upon the racing, which in some ways feels secondary. Within F1 World, the Series tab is the main place for single-player races. Here, events will be grouped into themes. For example, three events to learn a particular track or a set of supercar challenges, or even longer races using the 2023 F1 grid. For the most part, you'll be racing against a pack of F1 World-specific cars, with an AI named after people on your friends list, like Forza's driver tars. No, you're not actually overtaking the real Dave Cam. No one can do that. Each event you enter has a set of objectives, which you can see on the race selection screen. Be sure to cycle through and check your rewards using the triggers and pause button on the gamepad. Meeting these targets unlocks rewards such as vehicle parts, team members, cash, insight points and setup data amongst others. Completing a series unlocks further competitions and you also earn a trophy to display on your virtual cabinet. It's also worth noting that you can dip in and out of different series, so there's no need to finish all the events in one consecutively before trying the next. In fact, we recommend you try out different series ever so often to make the gameplay feel more varied. Each series event has its own tech level, which is a signifier of difficulty. It can be easy to have an overpowered car though. In this example, we have a car tech level of 379 as you can see at the top of the screen, but the most difficult race event is 260, winning we should smoke them. Within the multiplayer section in the series area, you can participate in real-world race weekend related online races, opening at set times. But Perhaps more interestingly, there are quick online races, with a twist. You participate with your modified F1 World car with its tech level against other races with their own tech levels. AI-controlled rivals will also fill the grid with highly upgraded single-seaters. Rewards are also paid out for strong results which in turn can be used to raise your tech level, so it's all one big circle of incentivized gameplay. It's strange to race against people who may turn up with a bigger racket, but at least there will always be the AI to compete against. 
There are also weekly challenges here, which rotate and include F1-themed events and rewards. We entered a hot lap challenge, for example, and beating the bronze time around the Red Bull ring during the Real World Austrian Grand Prix weekend unlocked Red Bull Racing's Miami livery for use within F1 World. Expect more events like this throughout next year. You'll also find a new ranked racing online system here too. There are now seven divisions to process through, but here you use equal car performance. Each week, you are placed alongside 100 random F123 races in a group. Competing ranked races earns points, and your ranking can change after a week based on how many points your group members also achieve. So, if you're rated bronze, you must earn more points than a set number of rivals across seven days, starting each Monday, to gain promotion to the silver category. However, if you have had a few dud results, you could also slip down a division. For example, here we were in silver one, but our lack of points meant we were set to be relegated to bronze. If that happens, you must enter further races, snag some competitive scores, and scramble back up before the weekends to keep your position. The aim of this is to be ranked elite. The best players in the world after the first season, 34 days remaining at the time of recording, is complete. In an attempt at cleaning up multiplayer driving standards, F123 has introduced a license system with four levels, D, C, B and A. Pretty simple really. Starting out in the lower levels, if you race clean in series races and quick online races, an on-screen bar increases. Fill it and you advance up to the next license level. While you are racing, upon the completion of a clean lap, you will see a green notification at the top of the HUD. Chain as many of these together as you can to progress through the licenses. If you do hit arrival or break track limits, however, you will see a yellow warning. This is damaging to your license rating. Worse, a big crash or penalties result in a red strip, heavily denting your level. Why would you like to raise your license? Well, in single player, several race setup options are now tied to the license level. For example, license D and C races don't have damage, while immersive pit stops aren't until license B and vehicle collisions for the full race until license A. This also applies to ranked multiplayer races. However, unlike single player events or F1 World Quick Race, you cannot manually select the license level used. If you reach A, for example, you enter a ranked lobby with A-level rules, including contact and damage, unless there aren't enough players also with the same license. Should you join an online league or want to race with some friends in a custom multiplayer lobby, the host has the option of restricting those who enter based upon their license level. So, even if you're only interested in competitive online racing, it may be best to play F1 World enough to level up. Finally, your driving throughout the main F1 World game modes does affect your license level, but if you'd like to run a single-player custom Grand Prix, you can switch off the feature within the Rules and Flags pre-race menu. As we mentioned earlier, you must check your rewards and affix parts with higher levels than your current stock to raise the tech levels, but you can also boost these parts before applying them, and we can't recommend this enough. When sorting through your inventory, before you equip a new part, you can select Boost Tech Level. This costs cash and insight, but the price is reasonable seeing as cash is never scarce. On the right of screen, you can see how much a boost will raise the tech level and you can hit this three times in total before equipping the part. Bargain! For a natural gameplay progression through F1 World, we do recommend boosting parts as it uses the most plentiful resource to enact, although when you later dismantle an element, you won't receive back the resources used to boost it in the first place. You can also create parts and team members from scratch too. This is called engineering within F1 World and is unlocked when you've completed a race with a rare or higher upgrade equipment. Visiting the engineering menu, Square on PlayStation or X on Xbox will give you the option of using resources to create performance enhancing parts and people from scratch. Generally speaking, doing this will result in additions with higher tech score than what you have equipped already, or at least within three boosts of being better. In our experience, you'll want to focus on creating elements that are either epic or legendary rated only if you can, and work towards saving resources for those. At this point, we should explain the three insight levels. Insight, Key Insight and Critical Insight. Like cash, you earn insight from completing events and you'll have plenty. Key insight is scarcer and critical insight rarer still. Crafting legendary rated parts and people through engineering are the best to go for, but they require critical insight which is hard to come by. However, if you have enough key insight for an elite level addition, the difference is marginal and can be boosted up, don't forget. Also, let's say you have a legendary part already equipped. Engineering a brand new epic part from scratch can still result in a higher tech level than an existing legendary part, despite a lower ranking. This is because the system is set up to continually scale upwards bit by bit, based on your current standing. 
The resulting creation may only be one or two points higher, but it'll still be a marginal gain. Of course, in this instance, crafting a new legendary part will bring even greater gains, but those critical inside points are so hard to come by. Crafting parts, it all sounds a bit, well, role-playing. That's because, frankly, it is. Did we miss the announcement that F123 is actually part of the Final Fantasy gaming series? Discuss in the comments below. Also, be sure to let us know if you have any F1 World questions, and subscribe to the Traction channel to be notified when we have more F1 gaming videos released. In our experience, once you get past the early stages, collecting critical insight to create legendary parts is likely to be the best foot forward. There are four main ways of earning that all-important critical insight. Completing weekly goals, completing vendor goals, completing podium pass tiers, and craft some in engineering. The final point of crafting them requires the use of key insight, and a lot of it. A thousand for just 10 critical insights, and that's far too expensive. Avoid. If completing races and becoming a warehouse logistics manager weren't enough, you can amplify the rewards by completing goals, found in the main F1 World menu in a dedicated area. Yes, like when you receive boosts and finally equip parts and people manually, you'll now also be ferrying back and forth between the garage and the goals menu. Menu usage equals engagement, apparently. Goals unlock after completing your first F1 World race, and here you will find milestones, seasonal and weekly goals. The latter, in a self-explanatory way, refreshes every seven days. You can check which rewards are up for grabs using the pause or options button when hovering over each weekly goal, and some of these do have meagre quantities of critical insight up for grabs. Then there are vendor goals. Six people each have a list of seven additional goals. However, unlike weekly goals, they are not already active. Once again, you can look to see if they offer any critical insight, but to start a goal here, you must use a thousand cash. This is also true of bonus goals, which are blind until you purchase them. Also, you are limited to 15 vendor goals at one time. Complete one, then manually collect the prizes before revisiting the vendors and buying new goals. The list of vendor goals for those not currently active also refreshes every 24 hours. Adding to your shopping list of tasks, it's important to check these vendor goals, but try to avoid the overly grindy tasks that you have time for. Try to be patient, and the next day visit the same vendor for a new goal. In addition, if you start a goal but realise you aren't realistically going to finish it, simply abandon it by hitting the square or X. It's worth noting, however, that the payouts are generally a bit stingy, so try and select the goals that will naturally complete by racing in a series or online events. The podium pass system is nothing new, first appearing in F1 2020. You earn experience points after races in any game mode. This raises you through the ranks and completing each level unlocks cosmetic items for your avatar, car livery or even podium celebrations. The pass systems are now not just used in F1 games, but Fortnite, Fall Guys, Rocket League and The Crew to name but a few. What's changed this time is that the free tier rewards are directly related to F1 World and F1 World alone. So it could be setup data, insight, contracts or legendary car parts. That also means critical insight in nice juicy dollops too. This time round, the cosmetic items are unlocked only if you have the premium VIP tier of Podium Pass, which costs Bitcoin. That's the game's optional virtual currency, purchased with real-world pocket money. VIP also changes the post-race XP screen to gold. Ooh, snazzy. In previous F1 games, there were Podium Pass-specific challenges, but they are no more. Simply race in any game mode to collect XP. F123 marks a significant step change. Now Podium Pass can directly affect your car's performance, as these extra unlocks are used to increase your tech score. So our tip is not to ignore it. Hidden away within the menus, the touchpad on a PlayStation controller, for example. If you've never previously paid that much attention to it, it's now essential. And like every gift we've mentioned so far, you must collect the reward by revisiting the menu. Do not forget. There's also a new feature of purchasing XP boosts, which increase the post-event payouts. Ew. Between 1,000 and 2,000 Bitcoin, these can be stacked, although, mercifully, doing so only extends their duration and not doubling their effectiveness. Another way of turbocharging your XP payouts is by being in higher online rankings. You see, in this example, following an event, we received some XP based on our Silver 1 multiplayer ranking. It all ties together and incentivizes that you play each game mode. If you're after quick podium pass progression, our tip is to work hard to increase your ranked multiplayer division, which is a more wholesome method than buying XP boosts. You can also unlock real-world team principles for your F1 World garage through the podium pass, with Gunter Steiner delivering a weight reduction and the higher chance to unlock rarer team members, for example. He's also a unique upgrade. Sadly, his ability to curse every second word isn't included as a special power-up. 
While you can still visit the in-game store and spend currency on even more cosmetic items like Beats headphones, unlike the Ultimate Team game modes in different EA Sports titles we referenced near the start, you cannot buy performance-enhancing packs, drivers or personnel outright. A relief. Makes you wonder about future iterations though, doesn't it? Then there's the in-game sticker book, the Compendium. As if to remind you that the classic cars have not been featured in an F1 game for over three years now, the images are from the sport's venerated history. Ouch. Still, let's work with what we have. As we've mentioned several times, completing F1 World events unlocks cash, data and insights used to make or upgrade new parts, but you also unlock stickers. These are parts of images which go within the virtual collection, which can be accessed once you've completed 15 laps within F1 World. Once again, you've guessed it, you must visit the compendium each time you obtain images, then go through the page to stick in the picture. It's mostly superfluous, however, completing a page, i.e. completing image, does pay out XP for the podium pass at F1 World Rewards. This is the main reason for spending time in this area, so if you receive some stickers, go stick them. You can also unlock packs of stickers via the podium pass too. As with everything in F1 World, it's all tied together. You can also buy stickers using, no, not Bitcoin, but Critical Insight. Wait, Critical Insight? Yes, the most valuable insight type used to fashion legendary parts, so our advice is don't do that. If, however, you have three quarters of an image complete and you're close to the next podium pass level, it may be worthwhile ever so often. Also, if a unique upgrade is the reward. Like parts and people, you can also engineer stickers, but only if you combine duplicate stickers with cash. It's worthwhile, but we simply haven't received that many duplicates so far. So far, we've bleated on about critical insight to craft legendary upgrades, but we've also mentioned them twice in passing now. There's one level above legendary, Unique parts are the top tier, but they are rare, very rare. However, once obtained, unlike other elements, they can be boosted an unlimited amount of times. One way of collecting a unique rated part or personnel is by checking the engineering menu in the garage frequently. At the top, you may see a limited time blueprint option, and if you're lucky, one may be to craft a unique element. But guess what? You'll need an abundance of critical insight to do so. What we've said about collecting those is more important than ever. Another is by completing certain entries of the compendium. If you have enough critical insight, again, it may be one of those few times purchasing an entry is worth it and a unique element helps you reach the tech level caps at a much faster rate. Right, that's just about it for our F1 World Guide. We've covered licenses, ranked multiplayer, quick online races, series events, upgrades, podium pass, and Gunter Steiner. To finish off, it's worth noting that the vast majority of F1 World is online, so if your network falls over, like we experienced when the game's servers were under maintenance, you can only access time trial and Grand Prix mode. Boo! We get it. The ranked multiplayer, themed races, and vendor goals are based on timed availability, but something to bear in mind. That's it though, we've finished our longest guide ever on this channel. We hope this has helped demystify some of F1 World's more confusing elements. As ever, subscribe for more and keep it pinned.